For 75-year-old Ruth Nagata, her childhood in British Columbia ended in 1945 when she, her parents, and nine siblings were given 24 hours and a choice. You could go into the camps or you could get on the train and go directly to the sugar beet farms and then you wouldn't be separated. And so my mom and dad I wanted us to stay together, so they went directly to the sugar beet farms. Ruth was one of 21,000 people who were forced to leave their homes and enter an internment camp or move. They were stripped of their property, possessions, and their rights, a move that still affects this community. The ones that came to southern Alberta had a close connection with each other. Uh, there were a lot of restrictions at that time. They couldn't come to the city or work in the city. So they had to really support each other during that process. Um, and you know, a lot of those fr the friendships that started from back then were long-standing. They still exist now. And uh, a lot of the families know each other uh, from a long, long time. Over a four-year period, dozens of authors from across southern Alberta put their memories into text. For those who were old enough to remember life in internment camps to those who feel the effects of decisions made before their time. This book gives a whole picture of this community's identity, past and present day struggles. We realized that a lot of the elders were starting to pass away. A lot of stories were getting lost. So it was at that time that we started that we better start a project to capture some of these stories and pass it on as a legacy of the community. Our days were filled with the family working hard together and enjoying the happy times together playing hide and seek, hopscotch, skip rope, attending Buddhist church, mom's tea time, the smell of freshly baked bread, and of course the rows and rows of sugar beets, thinning, hoeing, topping from morning to night. Many authors wrote on discrimination, pain and abuse. Ruth's chapter is full of memories and most of them are happy. So I had to ask Ruth why she wrote that way, why she wasn't angry. Our culture tells us um, it's called Shogunai and it can't be helped. It's wartime. So when I was home and we were talking, we never heard any words from my mom and dad, any bitter words. No, they never said they were angry or it was, it's war. The Japanese community was drastically changed by the decisions made by the Canadian government during World War II. The government gave a formal apology in 1988, but for Ruth, it wasn't enough. What ha they had taken away was our culture. That's what we lost because we were, you couldn't go to language school anymore. You couldn't be Japanese. You weren't encouraged to be Japanese. So. And how has that affected your culture to this day? It, for sure, within our family, we don't have a lot of culture. It's a challenge the Calgary Japanese Association is working to overcome by promoting cultural events throughout the year to try and get back what they've lost. The association believes this book will go a long way towards that goal. But for these authors, this book launch event was a chance to reconnect with old friends made a long time ago. Claire Fenton, Culture Avenue, Calgary.